Good morning. Welcome to our service. It's holiday season. Quite a few of our brothers and sisters are away today, but we're glad that we can be here. And I hope and have prayed that God would bless us. We're so dependent on God, his word, his encouragement through his word, and so I'm glad to see you. Thank you for coming. Just one announcement. Our sister Reimer has lived for many years on an acreage, but due to the loss of her husband, she uh, was forced to move. And so during this last week, she moved into an apartment, Legion's Arm, and I thought I'd mention that so we can pray for her. Such a move is sometimes difficult and um, be encouraged, Sister Reimer, that the Lord will be with you. Her phone number remains the same, so if someone wants to call her, just so you know. Uh, we turn to our hymnal, song number 364. 364. He lifted me in loving kindness. Jesus came. I love this expression, loving kindness. We often refer to kindness or being kind. We're instructed to be kind. But God referred to here in this song is in loving kindness. And then the writer speaks about our salvation and points out in the chorus that the tender hand of God lifted us out of a life of misery. Let's sing it together. In loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim, and from the death of sin and shame. Let's stand for prayer, please. Father, we thank you that 
we were spoken to and blessed already by singing this wonderful song, He Lifted Me. Thank you, Lord, that I too was able to make that wonderful experience. I was lost. I was far away from you. I was living in sin, yet you lifted me. Lord, I thank you that you are such a powerful and great God. You not only lift us out, but you also help us, and you're with us, and we can trust your powerful hand. You will be with us and give us the strength we need and encourage us. And so we pray, Lord, that you would bless us this morning. Give us your word. Speak to us, Lord. Help us to stay focused. Help us um, to uh, look up to you and give us what we need. You're able, Lord, to provide to all our needs because you're God. And so, Lord, we pray also for Sister Reimer, who uh, moved last week. Uh, we pray that you would help her, encourage her, and also that she would be able to adjust to a new environment, be with her, and make her a blessing there for the people that are living in the same complex. And help us all, Lord, to be a blessing. And so once more, Lord, we, we just want to invite you. Bless us today. Bless our live stream viewers and bless your, uh, your people all around the globe, wherever people are gathered in your name, that you would give your word according to all our needs. We love you. We worship you. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, please, to Psalm 89. Psalm 89. And I'll start with verse 1, and we'll read through 18. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. I've made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to my servant David. Your seed I will establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. And the heavens will praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints. For who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When the waves rise, you still them. You have broken Rahab. That's another word for Egypt here. Uh, you have broken Rahab in pieces as one who is slain. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. The heavens are yours the earth also is yours, the world and all its fullness. You have founded them, the north and the south. You have created them. Tabor and Hermon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand and high is your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In your name they rejoice all day long, and in your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength, and in your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, and our King to the Holy One, of Israel. That's a passage we will look at later or take a verse from. 
but it shows how wonderful and how great God is and who he is and also refers to the relationship we have with him and that we can rely on him. So today, we are the choir. And we'll sing together song number 490. 490. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. And in this song, it's a prayer. And he points out in verse 1 that he's a pilgrim through a barren land and then says, I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. And so we sang already about the powerful hand of God. We read it in Psalm 89, who speaks of the mighty hand of God. And here, too, uh, we again sing about that wonderful hand of God. 490. Guide me, O the great We'll turn to Psalm 89 this, this morning. Our text is found in, in this chapter. I read a story about a little boy who entered a candy store, and he just couldn't get enough gazing at the vast selection of, of candies. If you've ever been in a candy store, you know exactly what, I, what I'm, I'm talking about. He was fascinated uh, what he saw. And you can tell there's only one thing on his mind. He's looking at the jars and wondering how he could get his hand, his little hands, on some of that candy. And his dad is standing beside him, is watching him. And he said to his boy, just reach into the jar and grab as many candies as your hand can hold. Thinking just for a few seconds, the boy replies, Dad, can you do it for me? Your hands are bigger. Let me tell you that we encounter situations in life where we realize we need such a bigger hand. 
We just can't do it on our own. Our hands are simply too small. And so we want to look at Psalm 89 at verse 13. It says here, You have a mighty arm. Strong is your hand. And high is your right hand. He's making a statement here, but what he is actually saying is this. He's telling us how powerful God is, how great his strength is. He's high, his, his hand is high, he's exalted, referring to the victory of God. God can do any. And everything, for he is the Almighty God. If we can only remember the four words strong is your hand. As we come into situations where we don't know what to do, where to turn, how to handle a situation, that we remember strong is your hand, the hand of God. Now, if we fast forward uh, roughly a, a thousand years, we, we come to the book of Acts, and we find the early church mentioned in the book of Acts, and we read this important sentence in Acts 11.21, Listen to these words. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The writer of Psalm 89 realized that strong is your hand, he says. And then we read in the life of the church of the New Testament that the hand of the Lord was with them, this strong Hand of God. If you look at the Bible, the Old and the New Testament, you will find that the hand of God is mentioned over 200 times. I was so encouraged to, to find out that fact over 200 times. And I think what, what God is trying to tell us as his people, as his church, he, he, he's telling us there's no need to worry. It's all under control. You're in safe hands. God is saying, I can handle it. Strong is your hand. So I'd like to show us a few of the verses dealing with the hand of God and what the hand of God can do, what the hand of God has done. Take, for example, the world itself, our creation, the stars, the universe, the earth, the other planets. They're basically uh, two views that people can have. One is that some people believe that something evolved from nothing 13.8 billion years ago. But there's the other view, and that's a biblical world view. In uh, Isaiah 48, Isaiah 48, we read the verses 12 and 13, and here we find what the hand of God did. Listen to these words. Uh, it says, uh, God speaking, verse 12, Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. And now here it is. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together, meaning they obey me. God says, look, everything you see, 
everything around you, when you look up at nighttime, my hand has created all of this. Remember Psalm 19, verse 2, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Means proclaim the work of His hands. In six days, God created the world, everything. The plants, the animals, us as the human beings. He created Adam and Eve male and female. He created them in God's image. And in Genesis 2, verse 7, we read, And the Lord formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Simply speaks about God creating. But in Psalm 119, verse 71, we read, Referring to the creation of man, the writer uses these words. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. With his own hands, God formed us. God made us. God created us. He created Adam, yes. He created Eve, yes but also every other human being that ever walked the earth was created by God. And I realize I am not the result of a big bang or evolution. I'm not an accident poorly randomly appearing on earth. No, I realize I am God's creation. He made me. And when I read your hands have made me, it dawns on me, brother and sister, I am wanted. I'm not a nobody. I am wanted by God. God created me with his own hands. And I realize I have value I am worth something because God created me. God made me. And so his hand plays a major role in every aspect of my life. Think about the moment we realize that we are sinners. We have sinned. And God works in our life uh, to convince us and to point out uh, our wrongdoings, our sinfulness, and the sins we have committed. And God does that so we realize we are separated from God. So we realize we're guilty. We're lost. And so when we realize we're lost, it raises one question. How do I deal with this, being lost? In the Old Testament, one of the prophets realized this. We're on the wrong track. We've gone astray. And he raises questions. It's Micah 6, verses 6 and 7. I'd like to read it from the New Living Translation. Realizing that, that they're sinful people, he writes, What can we bring to the Lord? What kind of offerings should we give him? Should we bow before God with offerings of yearling calves? Should we offer him thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of olive oil? He says that's not enough. And so he continues asking, yeah, should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for our sins? In Psalm 40, the answer is given. Verses 1 and 2. He writes, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me, and He heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the, out of the miry clay. 
and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. The NIV translation renders it, he lifted me out, out of the pit and out of the mud and mire. And I was reminded of a song someone wrote. I was out on the broad way of sin and despair, crushed neath my burden of sorrow and care. My constant companions were trouble and doubt till Jesus reached down and lifted me out. And then the chorus, he lifted me out of the deep miry clay. He settled my feet in the straight, narrow way. He lifted me up to a heavenly place and flooded my soul each day with his grace. And God helps us. His hand reached down into my life, and he lifted me out. That's what salvation is all about, helping me to lead a life uh, that honors God and a life of victory. Remember our text? Strong is your hand. The hand of God also sustains us. The hand of God is with us amidst our fears and uh, our, our questions. Psalm 63, 8, we read, My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. I looked up the words, uphold me. Your right hand upholds me. Other translations holds on to me. Your right hand holds on to me. Your right hand supports me. Your right hand keeps me safe. And if we turn to Psalm 139, we have a passage there. It speaks about God being all-knowing and about other attributes God has. But I'd like to share just a few verses here out of Psalm 139. If you have a Bible, it would definitely help if you, you follow along. Let me read, start with verse 1. He, he writes, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. And you are acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Now listen, you have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. First, he speaks about uh, God being all-knowing. You hedged me uh, behind and before, meaning you're all around me from every side. You hem me in. You protect me. And you laid your hand upon me. How wonderful is that? God's hand upon him. Then he continues... In, in verse 7, where can I go from your spirit, he asks, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of mo the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, and here it is, L listen, even there, your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. He says, wherever I am, you're there. Your right hand handles my life, my situation. After the Israelites, just to show us how God sustains and and helps in all situations. After Israel uh, had left Egypt and 
the Egyptian soldiers had drowned in the Red Sea. The Israelites were safe, and Moses, he starts singing a song. You know what he sings? Listen to this. Uh, in Exodus 15, 6, he sings, Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. You have, Psalm 139, you have hedged me. You're, you're a hedge around me. You're there on all sides, in front of me, behind me. There isn't a situation, there isn't a time, there isn't a place where I am alone. Your hand is there with me. Remember the struggling uh, Asaph in Psalm 73 at the end. He came to this conclusion. He makes a statement. He says, nevertheless, I'm continually with you. He says that. Because you hold me by my right hand. The hand of God looks after our daily needs. Jesus once, when he spoke about prayer, he kind of added for his listeners, and, and, and he said, your father knows what you need. We need food, we need clothing, we need shelter. And then he, he adds, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and these things will be added or given to you. Meaning, that God will take care of our needs. It says in Psalm 104, uh, verse 27 and 28, he speaks about creation, includes the animal world. And then he says, these all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. When you give them, or what you give them, they gather in. And then it says, you open your hand... They are filled with good. You open your hand, all our needs are met. Remember, the hands of Jesus broke the bread for 5,000 men plus women and children. Or further back, the Israelites were quite well aware of the fact that God, for 40 years, set the table for them. I remember when they walked towards the promised land, every single day God set the table, the hand of God. Think about this. When was the last time we went to bed hungry? Can you see the hand of God in our life as well that gives? We live in a, in, in a land of abundance. It's true, as the psalmist writes, you open your hand. They're filled with good. But there's more. God, God's hand provides also healing. We often refer to uh, God's healing touch. We're dealing with sickness and disease. We're susceptible to them. It's part of the fall when sin entered the world, diseases came. And even in these situations, the hand of God is able to intervene on our behalf. While Jesus was on earth, we read in Matthew 9, 18, While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died. She was actually sleeping. Jesus referred to that in, in verse 24. So he says, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And then in verse 25, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. He had one wish. Oh, if you would come and lay your hand on her, she will live, he said. 
Gus strong is your hand. In Acts verse chapter 4, we have a story about the church being persecuted, or I should say they were forbidden to preach in, in the name of Jesus. And so the believers, they, they prayed. They turned to God, trusting in that strong hand of God. Let me read a few verses here. We start at uh, verse 24, Acts 4. So when they heard that, meaning they were forbidden to preach, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with a Gentile, and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant us to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. And here it is. By stretching out your hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. They had confidence in the strong hand of God so they turned to God, and they appealed to his hand, to his power. He says, Lord, if you, if you move your hand, if you intervene on our behalf, and signs and wonders take place, and people are healed, that will certainly help the cause of Jesus Christ. But you see the confidence they had? And when you read the following chapters of Acts, you will find that, God answered their prayer and uh, healed people. Let me show you another side here of the hand of God. It, it deals with our failures. When we, for whatever reason, did what we shouldn't do. Now, King David is a prime example. The King David who loved the Lord, but at one point in his life, he, he sinned gravely. He fell deep into sin. And so he expresses the feelings he had while he was uh, under conviction, while that heavy load of guilt was upon him. And so he took, he picked up his pen and he wrote down how he felt. Listen to the words in Psalm 32. In verses 3 and 4, he writes, When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. And here... At his lowest point in his life. Dealing with self-inflicted misery. The hand of God doesn't let go of him. But the hand of God, this time the heavy hand of God, is laid upon him. And he feels that heavy hand of God. And when he turned to God and he confessed his sins, he felt that this heavy hand was lifted. This hand of God corrected him. This hand of God restored him and made him well again. God, God's hands also rule over our lives the truth is, God 
determines the day we die. See, people are sometimes afraid, and maybe that is human, and they wonder, when will I die? How will this happen? And what will I experience? And so when, when we look at a tombstone and we see the, the, the year of birth and the year of death, both are determined by God. It was again King David who was fleeing before King Saul. He was on the run for over a decade and he was constantly uh, in danger and because Saul was out to kill him. But David had a proper understanding of God. Even amidst the fear, the uncertainty of life, he said, my times are in your hand. If you want me to die, Lord, I will die. But Lord, if you want me to live, I will live because my time, my future, my whole life is in your hand. Even the difficulties we face and political unrest, all the things that are out there, we will not die one minute before that time. God has appointed to us to die. Barnes a, uh, wrote a Bible commentary. He, he put it in, in words better than I can do. He writes about this statement, my times are in your hand. He would live as long as God should please. It was his to give life, his to preserve it, his to take it away. All in relation to life, its origin, its continents, its changes, its seasons, childhood, youth, middle age, old age. All was in the hand of God. No one, therefore, could take his life before the time that had been appointed by God, and he might calmly commit the whole to him. Our life is in his hand. And my last point, that is God's hand also encourages us. Encourages us not to give up. In the book of, uh, last book of our Bible, Revelation, we, we find in, in chapter, chapter 1, we're, we're probably familiar with the story of how the disciple John was, in his old age, he was in one of the worst situations a person can be. He was on an island away from all civilization. And there on the island, he received the book of Revelation. And he points out in, in chapter 1, the reason why he was on that island, we read in verse 9, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. What he's saying is, I am on the island because I taught God's word and and what Jesus had said, and because I, I, I testified to the word of God, that's why I'm here. Totally alone. Then he comes to verse 17. He speaks about a vision. And it says here in verse 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and the death. 
He encouraged him. He laid his hand upon him, and he said, John, it's okay. Yes, you're old, you're alone, but it's okay. He felt the hand of God upon him to encourage him. And Jesus once said in these uh, power, he used the powerful words in John 10, 28, and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand, he said. He's talking to the disciples, says, look, nobody can do anything that will snatch you out of my hand. And so, Today, as we reflect on the hand of God, I want us to go home reassured, confident, and encouraged because God has bigger hands, like the little boy realized about his dad. Psalm 89, our text says, strong is your hand. His hand is in charge. His hand saves his hand rules. His hand protects. His hand sustains. His hand supplies our daily needs. His hand encourages. And his hand reaches out to us when it is time to go home. We're safe in his hand. Strong is your hand. The psalmist writes, and one last verse. You're probably familiar with the prayer of Jabez. First Chronicles 4.10. But listen to this prayer. It's a short prayer. Very short prayer. But listen to his request. He prays, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. One of the, the four requests is, he prays, and he looks up, and he says, Oh, that your hand would be with me. Lord, that's what I wish. I don't ask for riches. If only your hand is with me. And brother and sister... That's a prayer we can pray too. Oh, that your hand would be with me. And we go into the week, and here comes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and all the difficulties that the week brings with it. But remember, we're safe. The hand of God is there. May God help us and bless us. Amen. Our children are dismissed for Sunday school, and we will sing a song together, 451. 451. Uh, we, we heard so much about God's hand, and here someone writes, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I think we all realize the dependence we have on God. And so this prayer is, take my hand, Lord. 451.
want to stand for prayer and ask the Lord, take my hand, Lord. Strong is your hand. Let's rise, please, for prayer. Who would like to pray this morning? Amen. 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 As we go back into the week, we want to remember the 
four words. Strong is your hand. And as we face difficulties, let's remember them. Strong is your hand. God is able to help us. We'll sing verse 1, and then we're dismissed. Precious Lord, take my hand.